with you. My heart rejoices today, not only because there's a rematch between Manny Pacquiao and Muti Bradley, and I understand why the, we have sparse attendance today. Uh, somebody or many of us would be attending, expecting a full house tonight. And at the same time, there are lots of reasons why I rejoice. I praise the Lord for these young men and women who follow Jesus in the water of baptism. I rejoice of seeing the fruits uh, of, of some of the ministries of our uh, fellow members here, cousins, friends, uh, youth ministry, DVBS ministry, and we see disciples following Jesus in the water of baptism. And I'd like to call on a sister here, Sister Sarah. Come, could, could, you, could you join me here, Alika Sarah? I'm not sure if you know her. See... Sarah Esteban, dito ka sa taas, Sister Sarah. Sarah Esteban is our uh, youth or kids at 111 Minister. Can I have a mic, please? Yeah. And last week was a very, very, I, I rejoice because of a very important ministry that has happened last week. That's a daily vacation Bible school. And... Can I ask the volunteers of DVBS? There are about 150, 126 volunteers. And if you're part of these uh, ministry last week, you were here for straight six days. Tayo po kayo. Can you please stand? Ayan. And baka gusto mong kasalamatan sila. We praise God for... The hard work of our volunteer volunteers. Kanina may nakita rin tayong volunteers nung 7:30 and 9:15 nag-attendance sila. We praise God because uh, for the six days we're able to minister to 304 students from age three to age 15, and we were able to share the gospel to them, and they were able to see. The five natures of God. We've talked about God as God as creator, provider, protector, savior, and king. And they were singing our songs to the Lord. Nakakangilabot po pag nakikita natin na nag-worship po yung mga bata sabay-sabay. Mula pinakabatang madiliit hanggang sa youth. All rejoicing, praising God. Okay. So... Brothers and sisters, volunteers, and Sister Sarah, we rejoice in the Lord for you, with you, for job well done. Let's just praise the Lord together. We give the Lord a round of applause. At mga kapatid, uh, in the, thank you, Sarah. Um, I just want you to, to, just want to tell you this, those in the children, the youth ministry, this is a very, very, very important ministry. We do ministry in the present for the future, or rather we do ministry for the future, doing it in the present. And you know what? Um, according to one missiologist, the world today is 51, 51% or more than half of the world today are in the ages 19 years old and below. And then dito sa Quezon City, uh, politicians would look at the youth vote because the youth vote, uh, people between from 21 years old and below comprises uh, a third of the voters here in Quezon City. Eh, kailan ba nagsisimula magboto ang mga bata? One year old, two years old? No, no. 17 to 21 is already one third. Ano pa yung nasa baba? So uh, we are reaching out to a very, very significant population in our world today. So let's continue value their ministry, uh, the ministry that many of our volunteers are doing for the youth and for the children. And by the way, do pray for the youth camp that is coming. Pray that, that God will work in a very, very special way through our volunteers and through these ministry. Let's come to the Lord in prayer as we uh, prepare our hearts to listen to his word. Father, speak to us in a special way. We pray that you will be honored as we meditate on your word today. We pray that you will bless us. We pray that you will expand our mind. We pray, Father, that you will challenge the way we think and the way we look at your work 
in our city today. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For those who have come for the first time here at CCBC, we are doing a series of studies in the book of Acts. Our senior pastor, Dr. Ray Abante, who is now on leave, uh, sabbatical leave, he started this series on the book of Acts since Jan January. And we are learning that the book of Acts is the story of the birth of the church. It started with the Lord Jesus Christ telling the disciples that this is what he expects to happen. He wanted to see the gospel being carried by the church to the ends of the earth from, their, uh, from starting from where they are to everywhere, from anywhere to everywhere. And at the same time, we saw that this is made possible because of the presence of the Spirit of Jesus Christ in the church. And then the last time, uh, the last Sunday of March, we saw how the gospel is being intentionally taken for the first time to the regions that are not yet reached with the Word of God, and that is represented by the first missionary journey of the Apostle Paul. And this time, there is another journey that the Apostle Paul has to do, and it was started again because of a council, a meeting of church leaders in Jerusalem. Uh, there was a development in the doctrine or the theology of the church. Uh, before that time, the Jews tend to think that a non-Jew ought to become or ought to practice Judaism first before they can become considered as part of the people of God. In other words, to make the long story short, you have to be circumcised first before you can become Christian. That was the issue. And then they clarified that and they say, it's not necessary. You know, you could remain as a Gentile. You don't have to go through these religious rituals of the Jews. As long as you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are part of God's forever family, whoever you are, whatever you are. And that was a cause of rejoicing back then. And because of that, the Apostle Paul decided that he has to take that news to the churches that he has started and visited. First, his home church in Antioch, and then he traveled to Tarsus, that is his hometown where he was born and where he grew. And then he went through Lis Deb Derbe and Lystra, the churches that he started, and that's where he began to uh, ask Timothy, one of his disciples, to join him in his work. And then he, was, he went to Tarsus, and his original plan was to go through the towns and cities of Asia Minor and visit the churches that started there. But in Troas, suddenly Paul received a vision that encouraged him to travel to Macedonia. Uh, while sleeping, he had this dream. He saw a man begging him to go to Macedonia. And he took it as a command from the Holy Spirit. So, the Apostle Paul changed his plans. And we could see here an example of a spirit-guided ministry. Yes, we make plans. But there must be flexibility in terms of changing the plans according to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So he traveled to an unplanned place, to Macedonia, starting with Neapolis where Luke joins Paul, and in Philippi where he was imprisoned, but he made a, a very significant ministry there in Ampipolis, Thessalonica, in Berea. You have heard of those cities. Then he was forced out of Macedonia. In all of these cities, there were opposition. There were people who would oppose in what he is doing for the gospel. And as a result, his life is threatened and he will be pushed out of the city. And that led him to... Uh, cool out a bit in the province of Greece, particularly in the cities of Athens and Corinth later on. And then he went back to Asia and then went back to Jerusalem. So this is Acts chapter 16 to 20. And what do we get out from this uh, portion of the book of Acts? Uh, the, the author of, of, of Acts was pointing to out that the gospel is moving farther west 
into other regions in the world. It is expanding farther west. And at the same time, it demonstrates for us the guidance of the Holy Spirit in the expansion. Yes, Paul is a key personality. There, were, there was Timothy, Silas, and, um, and Luke with him. But essentially, it is the work of the Holy Spirit through men and women of God. And there were also change of personalities, change of teammates. It doesn't matter who the person is, as long as he is an instrument of the Lord, the gospel will continue to expand. And then there is, we, we see of a pervading opposition of the gospel almost in every city or town that Paul ministered to and visited. There were people who will oppose them. And that is a reality that they faced, and that is a reality that we face up until now. Whenever you are going to do gospel work, always keep in mind the words of Jesus where he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. What are you doing when you build a church? What are you doing when you're doing gospel work? What, are you, what is happening when you are doing gospel ministry? You are storming the gates of hell. In other words, the ministry and mission is never a benign activity of the church. There will always be opposition. The, the kingdom of force, the, 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 the kingdom of the forces of darkness, you know, will be disturbed and they will counteract you. That is why prayer is always a vital element of ministry and mission. Let us not take that for granted. By the way, Mas Patid, Good Friday, we will have prayer time here, okay? Uh, let's use that space. You know? Instead of just going to the beach, we could take time to pray and fast together, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., okay? And then we see here also faithful ad adaptation of the gospel message to the different cultures that the Apostle Paul visited. Now, I would like us to focus this day on one visit of the Apostle Paul to a particular city, and that is the city of Athens. You know what? This is a very, very interesting city. Here, we are going to take a look at the attitude of Paul to this city. But before we do that, I'd like us to do some dialogical exercise. In other words, makipagkwentuhan muna kayo sa katabi niyo. Um, this is what I want you to do. Who among us live in Quezon City? I mean, this is your place of residence. Raise your hand. Oh, about half. Consistent through all three services. And then, of course, the rest of us live outside Quezon City. You just happen to worship here at Capital City. This is what I want you to do. I want you to turn to your neighbor. Makipagkwentuhan muna kayo for one minute. And I want you to tell that person, this is my impression of Quezon City. Okay? This is what I think of Quezon City. Kwentuhan muna kayo, okay? I'll give you one minute. Don't be shy. Kung di mo kakilala, makipagkakilala, makipagkilala ka. Okay, I'm sorry I have to interrupt you a bit, but, you know, 
you could invite your new acquaintance for lunch this afternoon, kung merong kampan lunch. But I'd like to hear from you. Tell me in one sentence, this is my impression of Quezon City. Okay? Sino ang gusto magbigay ng unang statement niya? This is my impression. Sino? Oh, okay. Irene? Quezon City is well planned. With regards sa roads, meron tayong Mindanao Avenue na malalaki, uh, Visayas Avenue, and Luzon. Yeah. Okay. And progressive. Progressive, well planned. Oh, iba naman. Ano ang impression ninyo? Ay, ah, yes. Si Tita Rusing, tapos si Ate Belen. Tita Belen. Ang impression ko dito sa Quezon City, it is surrounded sa lahat ng mga department store, magastos dito sa Quezon magastos. City. Magastos. Mall capital. <laughs> okay. Ayan, si Ate Belen po. Kayo po. Sige po. Um, mayaman ang Quezon City, kaya si Belmonte, before he left, nakapagpatayo siya ng maraming eskwelahan, mga foundation sa pangalan niya. But this time, hindi ko na alam. <laughs> May potential na maging mayaman, ano? Mayaman, but you're not sure. Okay, how about the others? Yung mga hindi taga Quezon City, if you're not from Quezon City, you're just passing through. Kayo daw, may mga tumuturo sa inyo, kuya. Ano? Maraming squatter. Maraming informal settlers. That's a politically correct way of saying it daw today. Ayan. Okay, what else? Oh, those who are visiting Quezon City, what, what's your impression about our city before you leave for your country? I don't know, but I think there's something special about Quezon City because when we go to Echo Park, we get discount because we are residents of Quezon City. Okay. So I think Quezon City is something important. You, you think it's something important? Okay. Oh, who else would like to give your impression? Sige po, Teroming. Oh. Okay, there are so many churches and ministries with their headquarters in Quezon City. Oh, that's a good observation. Any other observation? Dipadito. Yes, Sham. We are an intellectual hub po. Nasa atin yung UP Diliman, Ateneo, and isa pang university, I think. Yeah. We are an intellect... oh, no, 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 sa atin. intellectual hub. We are an intellectual hub. Would that mean to say everybody here is intelligent? <laughs> uh, pwede na tayong umano. <laughs> uh, we are supposed to be a wealthy city. Is everybody wealthy? Okay. But, but you, you know, we, we have diverse thoughts about being in Quezon City, an attitude about, about our city. You know, one thing that I'm curious about being, you know, I, I grew up in Quezon City almost all my life. But whenever I'm in another country and people would ask me, what part of the Philippines are you from? What do you think I would say? Manila. <laughs> Manila. <laughs> But it's not Manila. My address is Quezon City, you know. So there, there is, my, my son one time asked me this. Tatay, bakit there's a disjoint between, you know, where we physically are and where we say we are from. And that's a curious thing for me to consider. Why am I asking this? Well, when Paul visited Athens, what is Athens? Athens is an intellectual metropolis it is where these big names were born they lived and they served socrates plato aristotle sila pong may kasalanan kaya napakahirap na mathematics <laughs> na economics <laughs> anyway <laughs> at ng philosophy <laughs> but, but the point is out from that small city by modern standards, you know, 
Their influence pervade not only geographically, but even through eons, ages. We still study about these guys and their writings. In high school, their writings are still required reading to some of us. And then, of course, to the Apostle Paul, before he came to that city, he knew about that city. It was the first time in the second missionary journey, that was the first time in his life to visit the city. But when he was still small, I'm sure he has heard about it. It's a very popular city. It is like Paris. You know? <laughs> Narinig niyo na ba ang Paris? Of course, you know, it's something na, oh, how I wish I would visit that place. A very interesting city. And then another thing is that the Apostle Paul had this opportunity. It was not planned, but circumstances forced him to be in such a beautiful city. Nalala ko, you know, in one of my travels, I came from Cambodia, Thailand. I have to pass through Singapore. And then lining up for my flight, the airline said it's canceled and your, the next flight that we can book you is three days later. You know, I, I showed that I was disappointed so I could get the hotel, but they didn't give me the hotel anyway. But deep in my heart, I was rejoicing. You know, I'm in Singapore, beautiful city, doing nothing. So this is my time to do sightseeing and all of those things. And so the point is, that's the situation that, that the Apostle Paul was in. And, and, and he walked around that beautiful city. I'm sure he saw, he saw these beautiful buildings in its grandeur when it was functional at the time. Uh, the Eropagus, the, the, the Agora, and then the other places. I'm sure he, he saw the works of arts, the different sculptures. He went to the Agora and listened to the de debates and the lectures of the philosophers at the time. And what we're going to do today is to look at the attitude of Paul and what did he do. And this should teach us and give us insight on what should be the reaction of a Christian who lives in a city or who happens to be in a city which is dominated by non-Christian influence. We could see this in five aspects of Paul with the city. First, let's take a look at what Paul saw. We both have the same eyes. We both, have, we both can see the same things that the Apostle Paul saw, but what did he perceive? In verse 16 of Acts 17, it goes this way, While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. Of course, he saw the beauty of the city, but he also saw the dark side in the spiritual perspective that God has allowed him to see. And that was it was full of idols. Or in another translation would go this way, it was controlled by idols. You know, this is not an exaggeration because a contemporary of the Apostle Paul, he's non-Christian, but he's a writer. And this is Xenophon. This is what he wrote. It is easier to find a God there, referring to Athens, than a man. So you imagine, you know, you are in Athens and what do you see? Akala mo, human being, statwa pala. It's a God. It's a God. So uh, these are the Greek gods, you know. Olympus is there. So all of the, the high gods and the demigods and, 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 and the gods and goddesses of the Greek religious system, they're all there. They had all their statues. And by the way, mga kapatid, the Greeks have the reputation of really, you know, putting together nice statue of their gods, exquisite works of art, but it's still a god to them. It is idol. So that's what the Apostle Paul immediately saw. Now the question we have next is this. What did Paul feel? What Paul felt in the same verse, it says there, he was greatly distressed. He was greatly disturbed. The Greek word that was used here is the word paroxino, which means violent trembling, or which also could uh, refer to epileptic trembling. Imagine you, eh? when the Apostle Paul saw the idolatry of the city, 
He's inside. You know, he would tremble. He would shake. This is the, the Greek word from which the English word paroxysms came from. Paroxysms means, uh, you know, the symptoms of a sick man growing worse. So it's a medical English term. It's growing worse. So it's intensifying. His distress is intensifying. And that is how the Apostle Paul feel. I'm sure Many of you can identify with him, especially this Holy Week, you will go home to your hometown and then suddenly you will see your relatives, your family, your loved ones, you know, they, they are practicing so much idolatry and I'm sure some of us could, would feel distressed, you know, why do they have to do that? But what did Paul do as a result of his distress? Ito na po yung interesting thing. Yes, he was distressed by their sin. So what did the Paul do? Did he condemn them? Did he pronounce judgment of them? Like as a prophet would do, thus saith the Lord, you know, no stone will be left here unturned, your idols will fall down, etc., etc. No. Verse 17 goes this way. So he reasoned in the synagogue with both Jews and God-fearing Greeks, as well as in the marketplace, day by day, with those who happen to be there. In other words, when he felt distressed with the sin and the idolatry of the city, it moved him to bring the gospel to them. He responded by seeing the relevance of the gospel to these people. Instead of just rejecting them, instead of just condemning them, Instead of just insulating himself, you know, I will keep myself holy and separate from these people. I will refuse to be, to be influenced by them. I will not pass by the places where there are full of idols. No, he didn't do that. He went to them and brought them, make it a point to bring them the gospel. I'd like... I'd like to point to you an interesting word that was used here by Luke in the book of Acts for the gospel ministry that Paul did. He used the word reason. He did not use the word preached. He did not use the word proclaim. Actually, in this portion, suddenly Luke used the word dialegomenon, not the word keruson. Dialegomenon, which means, or it came, that's the, the, the root word of the English word dialogue. So when the Apostle Paul thought of bringing the gospel to them, he did it in a dialogical manner. Question and answer. Sensing what they are asking. Bringing the answer to them. Listening to them again. Responding to their queries. Two-way communication until his audience would be able to understand the gospel and respond to it intelligently. You know, my friends, sometimes this is the, or many times this has been the criticism of the non-Christian world to the Christians. Oftentimes we come to them with the answer. Yes, we have the answer for your life. Jesus is the answer. Christ is the answer. But the world will be asking us, yes, you have the answer, but you haven't asked us what is the question in the first place. Diba? Sometimes, you know, our proclamation mode has a tendency to just go and bring religion, bring the gospel to them without them really asking themselves, why do I need that? So the Apostle Paul, even if he is so distressed, about, about the scene of, the idol, of idolatry of that city, he was still careful in bringing the gospel to them in a way that they will be able to understand and accept it. And another thing about what Paul did, you take note, he reasoned with them in the synagogue, in the marketplace, and then take note, in the Aeropagus. Different places. It represents different kinds of people. He brought the gospel to the Jews and the God-fearing Gentiles. The people who are familiar with the Old Testament. Who worships the true and living God. He communicates with them. He reasoned with them. 
And then after that Saturday, day by day, he would go to the marketplace. You know what marketplace is? Hindi po Munoz Market, hindi po Balintawak Market yan. Marketplace, Agora, the, after the diggings that has happened there, they saw what it really was. You know what it's compared with? It could be compared with going to SM. Yeah. And it's not shopping that happens there. Of course, there is some shopping. Anyway, dito sa Quezon City, that's what people do. If you go to the Agora, you do shopping. But back then, if you go to Agora... You don't merely do shopping. Shopping is on the side. You do trading of ideas. You debate with the uh, most popular philosophers at the time. You exchange ideas with them. And the Apostle Paul went there and also reasoned with them. And then later on, there is this place called Aeropagus. Because of these philosophers who began to debate with him, they, were, they became curious, he's advocating foreign gods. And then they took him to the highest council of that city. And that is where the best philosophers, the head teachers, the head professors are investigating this new idea, deciding if this idea should be censured or not. You know what? While I was studying this, I'm amazed with the versatility of the Apostle Paul. And this really caught my respect for him. To people like him, people who study the Bible, he is effective. He could communicate the gospel to them. And then when he goes out, the ordinary people in the Agora, the everyday people who are there, he will be able to connect with them and reason with them and bring the gospel. And then later on, the door opens him to reason for the gospel in a place like the Eros. The most intelligent, the highly respected philosophers at the time are there to judge his te teaching and he was able to level off with them. I don't think I can do that, but you know what, my friends? This is something that we ought to pray for CCBC. Let us pray that God would make us as a church, not necessarily as an individual, but as a church. You know, in the city where we live, these are the different kinds of people we encounter. Sabi ni Ate Ruming, you know, there are churches around, so we encounter church people, religious people. But at the same time, there are so many mall people around, you know, their life revolves around the malls. You know, they go out from the office, pass by the mall, go home, and then when it is day off, they just hang out in the mall. I mean, the everyday people. And then there is these people of great influence, not only in this city, but even the whole Philippines. Don't you know that our city is the intellect, oh, nga pala, sinabi na ni Shamira, it's the intellectual capital of our nation. Although not everyone is intelligent. You know why? Dahil nagtayo ba naman ng ng train, ng rail to connect LRT and MRT and then after everything is finished you know, the trains collide so that just shows that not everyone is intelligent <laughs> after spending so much, we could criticize and all those things but uh, this is where the best universities are found in the Philippines and not only that sabi nung first service one young person says oh, Quezon City is star studded why do you say that? That is where uh, GMA and uh, ABS-CBN is located. So it is started, started sabi niya. And he was kidding, but that's reality. And it's not only uh, the place of stars, but it's the place of the greatest media, biggest media outfit in the Philippines. And another thing, Quezon City, our city, is a place where many government uh, Department headquarters are located. Many big businesses are located. In other words, it's a place of influence. You know, we should begin to pray as a church. Listen to this. We should begin to pray, and I'm sure this has been a prayer of those who have gone ahead before us, that Capital City Baptist Church would stand as an effect witness in all of these different kinds of people 
living in this city. God loves this city. God wants his kingdom to reign in this city. God wants the, the seed of the gospel to grow and become a great tree in this city. You and I are his instruments along with the other churches around. Listen to this, my friends. Do you know what our church slogan is? In the heart of the nation, with the nations at heart. It was written at the time when our forefathers, founding fathers in this church, like Bruce Kerr, um, what we call that, uh, <laughs> Art Bills, and then of course, Pastor Fred Magbanwa, when Edsa was still Highway 54, when West Avenue is still Atalahib Garden, when you want to Kubao, you don't get the MRT, you take a bus. And when the size of a bus is a minibus. Do you remember those times? When you could still swim at the creek behind CCBC at Block 17. Swimming po kami doon. Uh, you know, that time, the pastors, the founding pastors here, have thought about that statement, we are in the heart of the nation with the nation at heart. They could see the potential of the city and the people living in it that when the gospel is planted, deeply rooted, take roots in this city, the influence will pervade not only to the nation but even to other nations around. You know, this is one thing that's why I really appreciate the ministry of the different volunteers, workers that we have here at CCBC. For some of us, they minister faithfully among the children. And you know, when I tried to do my math, those who are serving in the different campus with the voice ministry, with the uh, children's ministry, and with the youth ministry, I realize that through our volunteers, CCBC is ministering to as much as 3,000 young people and children every week week by week in the past school year. You know what it means? When the seed of the gospel is planted, it will take root. These are the people who will make a difference in the future of our city and in our country. Oh, by the way, who among us graduated this season? You know, you graduated from elementary, High school, college, meron po ba? Meron ba? Yes. Oh, yes. Si Brian. Ayan. Marco. Marco. Si, si Marco pala. By the way, he graduated with honors. Naging pambato ng Pilipinas yan sa robotics composition, uh, competition sa Southeast Asia. Kaya he's good with robots. Ayan. And then, meron pa? Uh, can I ask the graduates? Oh, tayo ka yan. Uh, you graduated from high school. Graduate ka na high school. Ayun pa sa taas. High school din. High school ka rin. Yes. Yes. Tayo lang kayo. Tayo lang kayo. I want you to stand up. If you're, you have graduated from college, uh, ayun, ang kapatid natin yan. Are you a college grad? Yeah. Ito si Andre. Ah. Ijan. Ijan. You graduated from college. Yes. And from graduate school, serial? Ah, no, 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 from college. Pala. Uh, well, you know, sige na tayo lang kayo. It just reminded me, I want to pray for you. Can, can I pray for you? Let's pray for them. Let's pray for these young people. Father, we come to you and we want to thank you, Lord, for what these young people have achieved. It's a milestone in their life. We pray that you will continue to move in their lives. Prepare them, Lord for that big task, the big challenge that you are going to, that you have called them, Lord, to do. I pray that we, we offer these young people up to you, and even their education, and even, Lord, the doors of opportunities and learning that you are bringing up to them, that you may use this generation, Lord, mightily for transformation and for your kingdom. Amen. 
amin. You may be seated. Congratulations. You know why I'm thinking about them? Let me ask you, friends. Why do you want ed an education? Bakit gusto niyo yung makapag-aral? Why do you want to finish college? The common answer today of people is that they want to finish college in order so that there will be more do doors of opportunity to, to become rich, to, become, to make life better for them. In, in other words, it's about opportunity. I'm not saying that's wrong. That is all right. But the thing, if that is the only focus why we are having an education, we are missing the point of education. Why do we want education? We want our education because we want to learn. We want to expand our knowledge. We want to see the world as it is. Not with a narrow mind, but with an expanded mind. We want to see the world as God sees it. Why? So we will be able to serve the world better. We will be able to lead other people better. We will be able to bring transformation. Young people, I want you to keep that in mind. If the Lord is blessing you with education, take it. Give it your best. Be the best. You know why? You know why? God wants to raise up men and women who will be placed in those big media outfits out there one kilometer away from us. God wants to raise godly men and women who will be leading in these government offices that is one kilometer away from us, these headquarters. God wants to raise godly men and women to be used by Him to transform this city for His glory. And this could happen by these young people giving of themselves to be educated well and at the same time their hearts and their lives are dedicated to the Lord. So my challenge for you young people, don't take your education for granted. You might be that instrument of God in those places where he wants to bring his kingdom so let me move on the apostle paul he was that kind of a person you know he was not like peter who was not so educated he had the benefit of the best education and he used it he used it for the influence of the gospel in different aspects of the life uh, in, in the cities where he had been he was able to encounter the epicureans i will not uh, highlight them anymore. And to the Stoics, these are two different uh, school of thoughts that are popular in Athens at the time. And then now, what was the shape of the, of the message of Paul when he preached to them, when he taught to them? Let me read to you. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Aeropagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walk around and look carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship, and this is what I am going to proclaim to you. You see what the Apostle Paul is doing? Instead of condemning them immediately, you are a city full of false gods and idols. No. He appreciated their religiosity. You are very, very religious. But I notice, you know, you have one stature here to an unknown God. So there is a God whom you do not know. And you know, guess what? I'm going to proclaim that God to you. Do you want me to tell that God to you? Yan po. He didn't condemn them, but he connected with them. Paul did not attack them. He made friends with them. And my friends, that is what we ought to do every day. You want to be in the ministry? This is it. You want to be in the cutting edge of the ministry? The cutting edge is not here in this building. The cutting edge is out there where you are. The cutting edge is where you begin to lift up your hand and make friends with another person. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is connecting with them. Paul did not attack them. He connected with them. And then from there on, he talked about God. This God that they wanted to know. You know, the God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth. And he does not live in temples built by human hands. He was, he was challenging the way, the, 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 the thinking of the Epicureans, you know. That they could be able to connect with God because they, they, they have to put up statues and temples for them. And then he talked about God as sustainer. That he is not served by human gods as if needed by anything. Rather, he gives himself, everyone, life and breath and everything else. He was challenging the mind of the, the Stoics. Think that anything that you see is God. And Paul is challenging their mindset, telling them that, well, he's not God, but he's the one who gives these beings, human beings, life. And then he talked about God that is the ruler of the nation. And he said, from ma one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. And then he talked about God as the father of all human beings. And in, he said, for in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your poets have said, we are offspring. By the way, mga kapatid, when we say... We are the offspring of God. All humanity is the offering, offspring of God. The Apostle Paul is pointing out that he is the creator of everyone. And in that sense, he is accommodating their mindset that all human beings are the offspring of God. And take note. Listen to this. You know, the Apostle Paul, when he preached to them, when he, in, in his previous sermon, he would quote, from the Old Testament of Scripture. But this time, sa, sa, sa teaching niya ito, there are no quotations from the Old Testament. And guess where did he get these quotations? The first statement came from a songwriter during his time, and his, his name is Epimedides. He used some truths of that song, which is consistent with the truth of the Word of God, and use it to proclaim the gospel to the people that he's teaching to. It's like listening to Pastor George and Pastor George quoting Eli Buendia of Eraser Heads to help you understand the truth of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Parang ganoon ang ginagawa ni Apostle Paul dito. And then take note, he didn't only use one quotation, he used two quotations, two popular songwriters, poets at the time, as some of your poets have are said, we are his offspring. And guess what, you know, these words of Epimenides, for in him we live and move and have our being found itself in the New Testament, and now it is being used by Christian hymn, Nodi, diba? We sing, in him we live and move and have our being. The original words were penned by a pagan songwriter. <laughs> But of course, it was redeemed. Okay, so you could see here a redemption of the culture, converting it and being used for the glory of God. You see here the, 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 the missiological work, uh, the, the contextualization work of the Apostle Paul so that the gospel could be understood and be accepted by these people. And then the fifth thing that the Apostle Paul shared here was that God is the judge of the world. It says in verse 29, Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now He commands people everywhere to repent. For He has set a day when He will judge the world with justice by the man He has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising Him from the dead. You know what, this, this is the point of offense. The first points are points of connection. You know, we're familiar, we're connected. These are the familiar truths. And then suddenly, he pointed out something that his audience are surely offended. And what he's saying, God is going to judge you. And he's going to judge you on the basis of Jesus Christ. 
on the basis of Jesus Christ. So at the same time, we could see here the Apostle Paul not sugarcoating the gospel. He still presented what it is, that God is a judge and they have to face him. And what was the effect to his audience? Ito yun. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered. Oh, what stupidity, what foolishness is that? We should not listen to that. But others said, we want to hear you again on this subject. At that, Paul left the council and some of the people who said that they want to hear Paul became followers of Paul and believed. And among them was Dionysius, a prominent member of the society. He's a member of the Council of Eropagus, a philosopher himself. And according to church history, uh, to the writings of St. Chrysostom, Dionysius became the pastor of the church in Athens. Of course, a church was started, but he became the leader in the church of Athens until he died. So my friends, what can we get from here? Let us travel from the Mediterranean to the archipelago. And in that archipelago, let us go down here to the place where we are. Paul did not condemn the city, though the city was full of sin, idolatrous, and there's a lot of something wrong with their city. How about us? What is our attitude about this city? You know what? God loves our city. Let us repent of our, you know, we don't care, of our... Uh, Attitude that, you know, you just let things pass by. God is moving in our city. And God wants us to participate in what he is doing in our city today. And the challenge for us is this. Are you willing to be used by God? Are you willing to be his instrument? If you, you say to yourself, in him we live and move and have our being, then therefore you must be a person who is willing to surrender yourself to be used by him as his instrument. I'm putting my email address here, pastorgeorge at ccbc.ph. I want to hear your reaction about this matter. The, the fact is, the elders will be leaving tomorrow. We will be praying Monday and Tuesday. This is one of the questions we are asking ourselves now. What is God doing in this city? It's not merely what is God doing at CCBC. What is God doing in our city? What kind of invitation he is asking CCBC to join him with so that, you know, his kingdom could truly be proclaimed and take root in this city? Pray with us. Be with us in this. At the same time, let us dedicate and commit ourselves to the Lord in this matter. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. If the Lord has spoken to you, and you are saying, and you'd like to respond to him, you're saying to the Lord, yes, Lord, I agree, I want to be used by you. Or you're saying, Lord, I, I'd like you to change my attitude, forgive me. Or you're just offering yourself, Lord, use me, the strength of my youth and my talents. Just stand up, indicating that you are dedicating yourself to the Lord to be used by him for this purpose of honoring him in our city. Yes, just stand up, just stand up. If you are praying that way. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Father, you could see through the hearts of those who are standing before you. We dedicate ourselves to you, Lord. Forgive us if we have taken this city for granted. We know, Lord, you have been moving. You love this city, Lord. There are so many problems, but we know you have the answer. We know, Father, that your kingdom, you'd like to let your reign happen in this city. And we know, Father, of the potential of this city. And we just pray, Father, that you will use us. Here are our bodies, our lives, our talents, and whatever it is that we can do. Use your servants, O God. Use Capital City Baptist Church to be an effective witness to this city, that we could connect with people, Lord, and that we could be channels of your love and grace 
to the people that we encounter. We pray, Lord, that you will cause your people, Lord, to be used by you in the places of influence in this city as well. Here we are, O oh Lord. Use us. And this we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen.